Today we're going to talk about how business and strategy can translate into job roles at tech companies. So what is strategy? Strategy is a high-level plan to achieve one or more goals under conditions of uncertainty. You probably already relate to different areas like politics, advertising, the military, or manufacturing as having their own strategies for success. You might even have your own personal strategies to achieve your goals, like maintaining school and outside life, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, financial planning, or more. So what is business and product strategy? Well, business and product strategy is really no different than the other types of strategies you are already aware of. Strategists seek to answer several questions about different topics, such as understanding the current business domain, what and how we are doing in the market, looking for gaps and opportunities in existing products and services, understanding budgets and financials, as in A major component of strategy is differentiation, which is essentially how does your company or your product uniquely entice buyers and users in a way no other competition does. Let's look at some examples of differentiators. Cornering a fledgling market, which means making a big footprint in a new area or industry before anyone else has a chance to become a more advanced or recognized in that area. Product or service differentiation, which means what does your product or service do that no other competition does? How is it different? There are also technological advantages, such as a better algorithm that leads to a more targeted data that ultimately leads to a better user experience, for example. Pricing strategies. Market responsiveness, which is how quickly you react to market trends and or user needs. Product superiority. Production efficiency of the company, which means you spend less money than your competitors do on making this product. And appealing to your users' ethics and morals. So for example, if your company makes a pledge to donate 5% of all proceeds to a certain cause, people who care about that cause may be enticed to buy your product. Business strategy defines the approach, tactics, and strategic plan adopted by a business to attract customers and achieve its business goals. Do you have to invent something new to be a good business or product strategist? Let's look at a case study with Uber and Lyft. So the question is, did they invent anything new? I think we all know that for a long time there have been cars, drivers, and people in need of rides. Clearly before there was technology to support these needs, people would take analog means such as a ride board to solve these problems. Fast forward into the future a little bit, we still have cars, drivers, and people in need of rides, but now we have systems and technology that allow us to have additional features added into this mix, such as guaranteed payment, different payment options, and even pre-scheduled rides. If we jump to today, we see that the underlying problem of people in need of rides and people willing to provide those rides in return for being compensated has not changed. The only thing that's changed is adding specific features to this experience 
which were decided upon by doing lots and lots of design thinking and user testing. And yet Uber wasn't born in some strategy lab. The idea for Uber came from a personal experience that exposed a gap in the market. Picture Paris 2008. The founder of Uber and a friend were unable to get a cab. Walking around in the cold at night, they realized a gap in the market, and thus they began planning how to make on-demand rideshare a reality. Two takeaways from this story are that you don't necessarily need to invent something new. You just need to solve needs that aren't currently being solved to be a good product strategist. And second, by paying close attention to our environments, we can start to identify gaps in the market naturally. We don't need to try to lock ourselves away in a room and come up with a bunch of really good ideas. But speaking of the market, we have to be good at determining who is the market in order to start thinking about their problems. Take a second here to ask yourself, who is the market? You could answer this by creating specific personas or just thinking about demographics. Facebook. Twitter. Canvas. Silent Hertzman, which is a livestock caller that uses the Internet of Things technology to monitor livestock vitals, and all the analytics are stored on a mobile application. Strategy is the evolution of a central idea through continuously changing circumstances. So even if you know your market in one year, the next year it might be a good idea to revise what you know and see if anything has changed. Have trends in society or technology changed the market and how you can address them? You might be asking yourself, well, where do these strategy ideas come from? Well, they can, of course, come from people on the business or the product team. Um, they can come from the customers or users of a product or service, or really anyone who sees a need or opportunity in the market. But what you might not expect to hear is practice. Just like anything else, if you try to practice noticing problems that previously you might have ignored or maybe didn't realize exactly was a problem or maybe something that's not a problem for you but might be a problem for someone in a different demographic, um, opening up your mind to these types of solutions that maybe you were not needing to think about before will help you get better at recognizing where there are opportunities that people would pay good money for if you would provide those, those solutions. There's an Instagram account called Five Ideas a Day. And what this account essentially does is it tries to post really as many ideas as it can, although at least hopefully five a day. And what the point of this is is to illustrate that it is all about practice and it's about just trying to think to yourself as you go through your daily life, where are there opportunities where this thing could be better? Where are there opportunities for this process to be five minutes faster? And a lot of ideas come from instincts and assumptions and anecdotes, but validation is necessary before the company invests in an idea. Going back to the five ideas a day example that I just showed you, a lot of those ideas aren't necessarily going to be winners, but that's not the point. In fact, the more ideas we come up with and the more that we quickly realize are not viable and we shouldn't invest in, that's actually better because when we have a lot of ideas to choose from, we give ourselves the freedom to picking the right idea. So how do I validate if an idea is good? How does a company know when to invest in an idea versus when not to? Let's do a design thinking recap. So design thinking is a powerful method that is gaining more popularity and quickly becoming a part of more MBA programs and company strategies over the last 10 years. And essentially what it does is it looks at an existing product or idea, or it could be a process or a service, and finds out what users like and don't like about it through various customizable activities and workshops. And this identifies areas for new enhancement. And the best way to have a good idea is to have a lot of ideas. And sometimes we call this brainstorming. Now, believe it or not, brainstorming does have a few rules. Let's talk about some of the rules of brainstorming. Don't shoot down ideas. There's no negativity and no teasing for crazy ideas. Put lots of ideas on the table, no matter how silly they might seem. Have a clear goal for the session and also know when you want to end the session and don't let people stay past that. 
the more diverse the group and personalities, the better. And this is key because if you get a lot of very similar people or people with the same background, the number of total ideas you have will be lower because a lot of those people will have the same idea for how to solve a problem. Discuss the pros and cons of an idea, no matter how good or bad it might be. Have someone write down all the concepts and ideas discussed and preferably send them out in an email. And once you all agree up upon an idea, which means you think that this is an idea that could really work, could make some money, and could be successful, revisit it the next day. Because usually people come up with something better the next day or after a long break by looking at the idea in a different light. So once you have a good stopping place, give yourself and the team a break and move on to a different task. Mind mapping is a very useful method for getting people to brainstorm. Not only is it very visual, which stimulates a lot of mental activity, but additionally, it's just a good method for getting someone who might be blocked how to think of um, new and innovative ideas. And so essentially, this is a mind map that's already been filled out by someone. But what you would do is start with your, your goal in the center, which is how to get motivated. So if this were a team of people, they would say, We've realized that there is a problem with motivation among this certain pe group of people. We're trying to think of how to solve that. And so they'll think of these, these themes that turn into these big branches, like energizing yourself or imagining the end or seeing the big picture. And then from there, specific tangible um, actions that can be taken or ideas that can happen will have these other branches. And then as you can see, like for seeing the bigger picture, even sub-branches can come off of sub-branches. So there's kind of no end to mind mapping, and it's a very useful way to try to extract a lot of ideas, and especially if you are feeling stuck, but not necessarily anyone can benefit from trying to do a mind map. This wraps up our PowerPoint on strategy and business. So thank you very much for watching, and as always, please contact your instructor if you have any questions. Thank you.